Welcome back. This is Dan Habe with Sea of Ninja Hacks. And today what we're going to do is we're going to come into Catherine Jones's, um, well, I guess Automate Already it's called, but actually this is their CF Design School. And we're going to go here to challenge number two, and we are going to create the uh, challenge in here, which is the I Will Teach You To Be Rich web page, which is right here. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to clone this page into our uh, ClickFunnels account. And um, I shot this video originally yesterday, but halfway through it, the power went out. And I thought I recovered it, but it turns out that the first half of it lost all of the video. All I had left was the audio. And so I'm obviously having to start over. Now, there's two reasons why I'm doing this. Besides the fact that I'm recording myself doing all of her challenges, I'm also doing it because I came into this page uh, probably last week or something, and I looked at it, and I was just shocked on how bad this page was. Now, I joined CF Design School in May of 2019. It's now September of 2020, so what will be 15 months more or less uh, away from that point. And I thought I knew a lot more about this stuff than I did at the time, but now as I come back and I look at something that I created 15 months ago, and I say, holy cow, this thing was bad. Now, unfortunately, I fixed all the problems I had on the page, and so I'm not able to show you the really bad page and then show you how I fixed it because, again, the video was uh, just it was it was not usable. There was no video left on it, um, just the audio track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through here and show you some of the mistakes I made and show you how I fix them now, 15 months later. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come up here because honestly, this is the hardest part of the page up here. So I put together four different ways that you can do this up at, up at the top up here. Now, one of the things Catherine talks about is how you don't need to know any kind of CSS or Photoshop or anything like that. And the truth is you don't. You can build perfectly fine pages without any of that stuff. But what normally happens is people will come along to me and they'll say, oh, hey, Dan, I saw over here they were doing X, Y, and Z. Can we do that or show me how to do that in ClickFunnels? And then I figure out how to do it inside of ClickFunnels. And that's one of the things I really love about ClickFunnels is that, in, in my words are that it's infinitely extendable because it is so easy to come in here and to be able to layer a little bit or CSS over the top, a little bit of JavaScript over the top, and be able to get your pages to look like anything you want them to look like. Whereas you go into a lot of other builders, you don't have the ability. They may have more bells and whistles, especially if it's WordPress-based. They're going to have more bells and whistles, but they don't have the ability to be able to come in and really tweak things to look exactly like you want, like you would if you were building a web page from scratch. So what I always like to do is to come in here, take the native capabilities that are already built into ClickFunnels, and just put a little bit of CSS over the top and make things look really good. Now, like I said, when I built this originally, I made a huge amount of mistakes. One of them was instead of having this be a full width column, I had it be a medium width column. And then with all of these text in here, it's supposed to be 48. I had all these set at 36. Now, how did I come up with 36? I have no idea why I had all the wrong sizes. Here I had this image, it's supposed to be 517. I had this like at 441 or something, I think. And all the text I had in here, all the wrong size. So like I said, I thought I knew what the heck I was doing even 15 months ago, and I look back at this now and go, it was mistake upon mistake upon mistake, but the page still didn't look bad when I got done. This down here, I even used, I'll show you the element I used, and the only reason I'm showing you this element is so that you don't make the mistake I did and actually use it. And where is it here? The text block element. Let me just open that up for you because I'm telling you don't ever use this element. This thing has never worked right. I've talked to the guys at ClickFunnels and everybody says the same thing. It doesn't work. Don't use it. So don't use the text block element. And how do I get out of here? I guess I click on update and then let's come back over here and delete it off of the page. And there we go. So let's, uh, let's go into the page itself. And because I do things a little bit differently than what Catherine showed, and I think that some of the plugins, the extensions that she showed, also don't work right anymore. So 
I, um, I'll show you a couple that I do use on occasion. So I have this thing up here, it's called Font Finder. So we're just gonna click on Font Finder and then you come into your page and whatever you highlight is what it will tell you that you got going on. And so right here we got H1 and we'll just click on that and it's gonna tell us everything we wanna know about these, uh, these text elements here. So we got a color of 333333, um, or also RGB 51, like that. Background colors, open sans, font of 48 pixels, and on and on down the line. It tells you just about anything you'd ever wanna know about that particular font right there. Another one I use is this color picker tool um, what's it called? Color by Fardos, F-A-R-D-O-S. And pretty much all I use in here, because I'm not even sure, I guess there's a gradient thing here. I've never really looked at it that closely, a color picker. But what I do is I just go for the eyedropper here. Uh, that's what I mostly use this for. And then you can come in and it does a really good job of picking out exactly the colors that you want because it blows it up and you can see, see the little thing right there. And then you just click on whatever you want and it'll copy it up here to the clipboard and then you can just go in and paste it anywhere you want and then we'll just click the X to get rid of it. Uh, but the way I normally do stuff is I'll come into here, we're gonna use Chrome's developer tools and we're gonna right click on anywhere on the page and I'm just gonna go inspect. And at this point here I have the mobile emulator turned on so we'll just turn that off for right now. So I clicked here and then it shows me we have our H1 tag right there and we can open that up if we want. It'll show us what all the words are inside of that H1 tag. But then you come down here to the bottom and it will tell you everything you want to know. So basically it's telling you all the same stuff that you could find in the font finder tool, but it is right in your uh, sidebar here. Now I have mine set to the side. You could come up here, click on these three dots. You can set it down to the bottom. You can set it to the right. You can have it floating around on the screen. I prefer mine on the left hand side. Um, so you can put it wherever you want. But now we come down here and we see that it says here font size 2.4 EM. And for the life of me, I can't remember what EM stands for. But what it means is 2.4 times the standard font size set in the code. So whenever like in the, uh, in the head section or the body section, it'll set a standard font size. So in this case here, I think um, the standard font size is 20. And so this would be 2.4 times 20, which would give us 48. Now you don't wanna have to do the math on that every time. So you can click on this uh, tab right here that says computed, and it tells you a whole bunch of stuff, including it'll tell you how big this element is. And you can see as I hover over this, it turns the whole element blue. And then if there's some padding, that will show green around the outside. They can have a border and you can also have a margin. And you see as I go over it, it uh, different colors appear on the screen depending on what I'm pointing at. And then you can come down and you can see here the color of the uh, font. You can see the font family, and here we go, the font size of 48 pixels. So we know that that font needs to be 48 pixels. Now the same thing here, let's take a look at this image. So we right click and we inspect on that image. And we can come over here and we see on the image as we hover over it, that it is 517 pixels wide by 337 tall. So you always have the width, the horizontal, the x-axis is first, and then you have the, the height, the vertical, or the y-axis, it's always the second number. So it's 517 pixels wide. Now, generally speaking, when I put that then into ClickFunnels, I only put in the width. If you put in the width, it'll auto figure out what the height is supposed to be. So it'll autom automatically give it 337 if you put in 517. But now here's the interesting part is you see after that it says intrinsic of 367 by 239. That means that they created that image originally at only 367 pixels wide but they are stretching it out to 517, which in my book is really a no-no. You want to, in this case here, if I were creating this image, I'd wanna create that image bigger. I'd make that image like 600 pixels wide, and then you smush it down a little bit, because that way you're gonna maintain the integrity of the picture, it's going to look good. If you start stretching out images, basically you start stretching out pixels, which you really can't do, and so, 
it becomes grainy. The picture just becomes all mushy and everything. So whenever you're building any kind of pictures or anything, just make it bigger, you know, another five, 10% bigger than what it needs to be. And then just smush it down in size. And it's going to give you your best, uh, uh, your, your best image quality. So then we can keep going through and we can just right click here and we can inspect this and we can look at, okay, well, what's the size of that font there? It's 22.5 pixels and on and on down the screen. Of course, as we're looking at this to begin with, we just get a general idea. It's like, okay, we know we need a two or three column row here, depending on how we're going to build that. We got a one column row here, a two column row, obviously an input box like right there. And then down here, another image with some text and some dividers and whatnot. And of course, the easiest way, um, again, I forget it's been 15 months since I've watched any of Catherine's videos. I forget how she shows to capture images. But the easiest way for me is you just grab them like this, you drag them over, and you drop them onto your desktop. And there you saved your image. If you're looking to save a background image, that's a little bit different. And because there are no background images on this page, I really can't show you on this one. So hopefully in later trainings, I'll be able to show you how to do that. So let's jump back into my version of this. And the first thing we're going to do, let's put this back to where we want it as full width. Now, let me, uh, before I continue that, let me show you one other thing. Um, is So let's come down here to this element because here's another thing that's uh, pretty cool about using the inspector is now we have this image. Okay, well, that's 780 wide. What I'm looking for is how wide is this line right here because clearly this is going to be the full width of this page. So we got to find that section. And again, because you can move your mouse around uh, over here on the side, you eventually is going to find something that is that width. And we can see here that that is now 975 pixels wide. You can see it right down there on the screen. So we know that's 975 wide. So again, when I built this originally, I had this. So this section down here was only 770 pixels. And so we know we want it to be about 975. So let me actually save this. I need to make some corrections. It's session is timed out. Let me. Okay, so let's preview the page. Now, you never really want to go into the inspector when you're in here. So you don't want to be in your page where you're editing and then go and click and inspect because what will happen is if you go in and you change some of the CSS in the sidebar over there. So uh, let me just show you here. Let me turn this back on. So let's say, let's go back to our styles and let's say I wanted to uh, border top five, five pixels and this color. So let's say I just want to change this color. Let me make that uh, red color. Okay. Now if I was inside of the editor at this point and I clicked on save, it would save that as being red. But if I go and look at the CSS, I'll never see it in the CSS inside of click funnels because it didn't store it in the CSS. It stored it well, it did store it in the CSS, but it didn't store it in the CSS that we created, that we can see. So you might be hunting around for a while trying to figure out how did this thing get turned red or much worse things that could happen on the page. So always do the inspector tool from inside of, the, um, inside of a live page itself. So let's scroll down to the bottom because what I wanted to show here was what is the width of this item down here at the bottom, like I said, when I originally built it, because I was using that narrow frame, that medium section width instead of the full section width, I had this, it only got out to 770 pixels. Well, now we can see that it's at 980 pixels. That is perfectly fine with me because I don't know if I've said it uh, on this one or not. It's not about perfection on these. It's about learning how the tools work, learning how the editor works, learning how to put stuff together that looks pretty good, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, for me, I like to make things pixel perfect because I want to have the challenge of, okay, we got this here and I want this thing exactly right in the right place. And that, that challenges me to have to go out and then find the CSS or whatever kind of code I need in order to get it to look exactly perfect. But that's how my brain works and that's what I like to do. 
I mean, I actually, if I could just sit around and work on web pages and write code and figure stuff out all day long, that really would be an ideal job, but they don't pay as much as I want to get paid. So, um, so that's the, that's it. We got the right width here now. So let's go back into our page. Let's fix this back up here. Uh, make that back to 48. Everybody knows how to put in a text element, so that's not a big deal to put those in. And again, like I said, this one here I had messed up. And so, again, this one had to be, uh, what was it, 517 pixels, I think. Let's go back in here and inspect it and make sure what it was. So we had, yes, 517 pixels wide. So that's what we wanted there. And then we had to kind of just look here and go, all right, well, where does this line up? Clearly the center of the page is like right here. So we needed that to be slightly off center. So we just, uh, you know, we just pull this over. And then this box right here, this is a column. So we're going to come up to our columns and we're going to come down and you can see the blue box moving around on the screen as I slowly scroll down. So you always know where you are, except of course, if you have a really dark background or blue background, it's kind of hard to see sometimes. And so we come down here and we got this two column row and we're going to come, here's the first column, here's the second column. And what we want to do is we want to open that up. We're not going to have an image background, but we are going to have a colored background and that color is going to be white. All F's always indicates white. And then we had some top padding set here of 20. We had bottom padding of 20 as well. And then we had a left right uh, padding of, would I have that at 65, was it? 45, okay, right there. So we, because I want this to be just in two lines up here. So that's the way that is. So it's 45. And don't be surprised when you come in here and there's absolutely no number in here. Just do what I did pull the slider around, see up here there's no number. So you just pull the slider and then the numbers will appear. They've always had something wonky with their columns and they just can't seem to ever get that fixed. Uh, but uh, let's come into our advanced. We want our corners to be square. We want the border full and solid and five pixels. And again, if we come over here, we can inspect this element again as well. And we can come down and it says panel. Let's click on that. So we have our background of all Fs. We have a border, five pixels solid, and a color of E, 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 E. If you see only three, three letters there, just, just duplicate that again. So that's just the shortcut for E, 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 E is just three E's. And then we have uh, padding. Again, we're back to our EMs on our padding. So we can go into our computed. And we can come in here and we can see that it's green. And so we hover over that and it says that that padding is 31 pixels on either side. And then the border is five. Now again, 31 pixels. Do I have mine set at 31? No, I think I have 20 at the top and uh, 45 on the sides. And that's, that's fine. Make it look good. It doesn't have to be perfect exactly the same as everybody else. And here's the other thing you're going to see like here. These words aren't centered. Are they supposed to be centered? I think so. Um, they're not. So I fixed mine and put it in the center um, because I certainly, I think that looks better. So we got that all set there. Maybe I could go a little wider here, but then that started messing with the words. And then again, we had, um, we had our text sizes in here. Again, I had that all messed up the first time, but we have like, uh, yeah, so 23 pixels there. And then, of course, you can also, in each one of these input boxes, you can set the font size in there as well. And theirs was 20, and so I made it the same. And the same thing with this button down here. We can put in our button color and our font sizes and everything else. And then you see down here at the bottom, we have another text block. And so all I did is I made a second row and left this blank here, moved it over so these lined up the same and then just dump that text box right in there. Okay, now down here at the bottom, what this is, is we have a divider, then we have an image, and then we have another divider, but we also have a text element here. So let me just open that up. One of the things here, so I have minus 23 on the top margin, so let's just get rid of that. And you can see that it, the text element actually lives down here below this divider. And I also put a white background on it. 
Yeah, right down here is the, well, it's not white, it's F9, 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 which is the same color as the background of the rest of the page. And um, so I made it F9, and then all we do then is we just give it again that minus 23 pixels, and it pushes it right up over that divider so it actually looks like that divider is separated but truthfully it isn't now in order to get that to work i did have to use a little bit of css and so let me show you the css on that even before that let me just show you here i had a background color of that f9 so i set the entire site with a background color of the f9 and then this section up here at the top i set this background color to white so that it would stand out against it. But it was just easier that way to set it. I mean, I could have set this, this background color to the F9 as well, but I just set the uh, site background uh, for that. So now we're gonna go into our custom CSS. Now you would come in here and click on custom CSS right here. I made myself a little bookmarklet because I work in the CSS a lot, so it just makes it easier for me to get in and out. But let's take a look at here. The uh, I'm just calling this bottom image headline. And one nice thing with this bookmark that I created, I can resize my page so it's easier to see what I'm doing. So let's come in here and let's just take out what we had here for content. Now you see what happened was that divider went away because the divider didn't really go away. You just see now that this element is 100% the width of this of this row minus the padding around the sides. So it went out to 100%. Well, we don't want that. We want it to be more narrow. We want it cutting off like right here so that we can see that divider behind it. So in order to do that, we're gonna do two things, which were, where is it here? So first off, we're gonna say we only want a width of 40%. So let me just turn on that width of 40%. And what you're going to see is it went over to the left-hand side because generally speaking, everything is going to want to float left on a screen if it's not 100% width of the, the um, element that it's inside of. So if it's not 100% width of the row, it's going to want to float to the left. So what we do, it's an old CSS trick that everybody, everybody's been using forever, which is we're going to say we want to set up a margin. So this isn't margin right, this isn't margin left, this is just overall margin, which is kind of a shortcut way of saying, you know, margin right 10, margin, uh, margin left 10, margin top 20, margin bottom 30, you know, instead of that, we can cut it down and put it into one statement. So what this says is, and we're looking at the line right here, what this says is give me a margin on the top and the bottom of zero. So if you have only two numbers set in here, the, the first number would be for the top and the bottom. The second number would be for the left and the right. If you only have one number set, of course, it'll be for all four sides. So in this case here, we have margin of zero. So we have top and bottom margin zero. And then we have auto for left and right. And auto says basically, however wide this element is, whatever's whatever it doesn't take up. So in our case here, our, our item is 40 percent of the screen width or 40 percent width of the element it's sitting inside of we want to then split up that extra 60 percent and give it half each on either side so it just takes the other 60 percent puts 30 percent over here and 30 percent over here and then it just uh, sets it right into the middle so that's the simplest way always to center horizontally center an element anywhere on a page so as i take that out it just puts it back to the middle. So that's how this gets in the middle. And then again, uh, below that is just an image and another divider element, and then the footer down here again, a couple of text elements. So now up here at the top, let's just take a look at what, what we have. So here, let me just scroll it down. So if you're coming in and you're just building this thing on your own and you have no idea if it's your first build and your first time with ClickFunnels, the whole thing, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, in theirs, of course, and this is the bit that uh, trips everybody up, is how close these two elements are to each other. Okay, so 
in here, what you would do is you come in and put in a three column row, just like I did. And then you say to yourself, okay, well, I want to get this over here as close as I can. Okay. Well, that realistically is as close as you're going to get because we got our text element here. Oh wait, that's right. There's a text element. So actually we just come into the text element itself and we say, you know, send it to the right. Normally come in in the center. You can go to the left, you can go to the center, you can go to the right. So we're going to say, let's move this over to the right as far as we possibly can. And then with the image right here, I don't think there's really much we can do because it's already shrunk down so small. Even if we float it to the left, okay, it moved over just a hair. And so we got that. And now, now I want to look at the page and go, okay, where does this line up? Okay, well, this pretty much lines up straight up along this edge here with the bottom. And the same thing over here. We pretty much got one straight line all the way down here up to that image. So let's see what we can do here. Um, the only thing we can really do is we can change the width of this row. So let's bring in that row width a little bit. So there we go. We're at 90%. And let me see here if we go left and right on this. Let's just bring that in a little bit. Now, does it look to you and me here that this image got shrunk down? Let me see here. Is that image too small? No. Well, yeah, actually it did. That did shrink down a little bit, so that's not necessarily good. Um, let me see. What else can we do here? Let's uh, Actually, what happens if we go back out to 100%? And yeah, we're not quite out there, but let me see over here on this side. We can come in and let's just center align this. All right, well, now we're in here a little bit. We're in here a little bit. Okay, that doesn't necessarily look bad either. And that's the thing. You just got to kind of fiddle around with it. But again, realize that unless you want to use some CSS or something else, because that's how... Well, that's what they had to use in order to build the page originally. They used a whole bunch of CSS to get this stuff to line up. So if you want to just build it like this, this is perfectly fine. There's no reason to have those two smushed up next to each other. You know, and again, you can, we can make this, we can make this smaller and we can move that back over. We can set it back down to 90 um, and we can move this back to the left, however you want to do it, because frankly, it's your page. But now what I'm going to show you here in a second, let me just set this back down to 90. Okay, what I'm going to show you here now is four other ways that I built this out in order to get it to line up better. Now, the first one here is basically what we did down here at the bottom, but I just added in one line of CSS. So let's just take a look here and see how I have this set. So I have 90% on the width and... Uh, maybe we can even make that out to five right there and um, and that's it. But how did I get this element to move over here is I just used a little bit of right margin. So let's go into our CSS and we're going to come down here or margin right to be more accurate. And so I just said, take that headline element and give it margin right of minus 120 pixels. So let's just take out the one here and just make it minus 20 pixels. And you can see it moves back over to the left. So all I got to do is put in minus 120 pixels. And how do I know it's 120 pixels? Because I put in 100 pixels and it wasn't enough. Then I put in 110 pixels and it wasn't enough. So I put in 120 and I said, hey, that looks pretty good. That's how you figure these things out. I mean, that's, that's the truth of it. There is no science behind this. It's, it's more art than anything else when you're doing this kind of stuff. So that is by far the simplest way to do that just put in a little um, little right margin and just push that element over. And it's perfectly fine. You should see some of the stuff I've seen on web pages, like minus a thousand pixels um, for, you know, to move stuff off the screens and then have them slide back, back on and all kinds of stuff like that. So now the second way we're going to do this here is let me do this. And then actually, let me show you here. So this is only, see, up this one up here was a three-column row. This down here is a three-column row. Like I said, this is the same as this without the that right margin. In fact, let me just delete this out of here. And then this one here and this one and this one are all just two-column rows. And what I did is I came in, and let me just turn off the CSS, and then I'll show you what I did. 
we'll turn off the CSS. And what I did is I came in and I dropped in the image and you can see how wide it is and then the uh, text element as well. Now you're gonna notice here the image is on the top because what we're gonna tell it to do is we want it to float to the right. So both of these elements we want to go to the right as far as they can go and basically line up next to each other side by side all off to the right hand side. And because we want the image to be on the farthest right, we want that in our stack first. So let's go back into our CSS. Let's shrink this down so we can see what happens on the screen. And then we're going to just uh, turn on our float right. So here's, here's our image um, uh, selector and here is our text selector. And so we're going to take out that float right, going to move it all the way over and then we again are going to also put in, we needed a little bit of a margin in here, so we're gonna take that headline element and we're gonna give it a right margin of 10 pixels. And so there it moves it apart. Now, in case you don't know how I got these right here, they're known in, um, in ClickFunnels as a CSS ID selector. If you don't know how I got those, I'll show you real quick. We just come into the element, click on the gear, come down here and click on this the hashtag it says get css info and we come up here css id selector and we copy that out and then we come up to our css and we just paste it in here and here and the same thing you would do on the image and because i wanted the image and the headline to both float to the right you put in one you put in a comma carriage return put in the second one and then you put in your curly brackets and that's how you put it in. So you can, you can call up multiple elements at the same time just by putting a comma in between them. Okay, now let's skip down to the fourth one because this one uses pretty much the same thing. And so actually let me turn off what we have here for number four. Okay. Now you can see in this case here, I have the text first and then the image second. Because what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use something that is known as Flexbox. And what it's gonna do is it's going to line up all these items again side by side. It's just kind of a different technique for doing it. So you can, you can put in this, and I show in a lot of other videos how to do this with icons, is you can take your four or five icons and you stack them all one on top of each other and then what, what it'll do with the flex box, it, it'll line them up. So they're, you know, they're this way on your screen. But when you turn on a flex box, they go like this. And they could be all really close together. You can decide how far apart you want each one based on the padding or margin or whatever you want to use on that. So let's go back into the CSS. Let's scroll down here to number four. Let's shrink this down if we can enough. Okay, so in this case here, we have to do this inside of the column. You always set this part here where you call the flex. You always want to call that in the, not on the elements themselves, but on the element that they're sitting inside of. So you got your box, which is our column in this case here, and then inside of that column is the text line and the image. So we want to actually address the box around it and so in order to get that column uh, ID selector we're going to come into our columns up here at the top we're going to open that up again we're going to scroll down until we find that column here it is we're going to come down again hashtag grab that out and put it into our CSS right here so that's where that goes right there. Now, in order to call flex, then we just say display colon flex. And let me move this down again. So we'll turn on flex. Now, there's other different displays that you can have. You can have display um, uh, display block or display none. And there's probably a dozen different displays that you can have. But in this case here, we're saying we want to display this in the flex format, which is basically grab the things we had that were stacked on top of each other and put them all side by each. That's exactly what we did here. Now, it will 
always want to go to the beginning of the box or to the left hand side of the box. So we have to say, how do we want this content justified? And we're going to say here, flex end. Now, do you think for one second that I absolutely know everything there is to know about CSS? The answer is no. You know what I do? I Google it. So I didn't quite know. I mean, I knew there was a way to justify it, but did I know it was justify content flex end? Of course not. I Googled it. I went to W3 schools. I looked, I go, okay, there's the syntax for it. And that's one thing you have to really understand about watching any videos like this. When I start talking about code or anything else, it's not that you have to learn the code. What you do want to do though, is know that it's available. You can say, oh, I saw somebody do this somewhere once, so I know it's available. All I got to do is find the person who can either teach me how to do it, or I can pay a couple of bucks to do it for, for you. Or you can do what I do, and I just Google it, and I found what I needed. It was funny the other day. I'm working with a guy who doesn't know anything about CSS, but he comes along and goes, oh, hey, I figured out how to do it by doing, um, what was it, position sticky. I had never heard of position sticky before. I looked it up and I'm like, holy cow. I didn't even know that existed. Now I do. So I learned something from somebody who knew nothing about CSS or just happened to find it somewhere. So the thing is you don't need to become an expert at this. You just need to know that it can happen, that it is available, and then reach out and find somebody who can help you with it. And so then the next thing we want to do here is just put a little space in between these guys again. Up at the top, what we did, we did margin of 10, uh, yeah, margin right of 10 pixels. Here, I tried margin right of 10 pixels. It didn't work. So I said, well, let's try padding right with 10 pixels. And boom, it worked. So again, it's a lot of trial and error sometimes. You just put one thing in, okay, that didn't work. But again, my brain is wired in such a way that I, I love doing that stuff. I was building a membership site the other day and I worked on it for 20 hours, not 20 hours straight. It was like over three days, but I was working on it for 20 hours and I was excited the whole time because... I was building this really super cool membership site uh, all right here in ClickFunnels. It doesn't look anything like ClickFunnels normally looks like, but that's just, that's just me and that's not everybody and I, I, I totally get that. So let's look at the third way of doing this here or the fourth way in my examples. Um, so number three is gonna be this one right here. And in this one here, I'm using something totally different. I'm using the featured image element inside of ClickFunnels. So let's come back in here. Let's take a look at this element. And in fact, let me do this. Let me put in a brand new one just to show you what the element's going to look like when it comes straight out of the box. And so let me see here. Image, image feature right here. Okay, so you have an image and then you have a headline and you have basically a paragraph below it. So you can come in and you can edit this headline any way you want. And in our case here, I completely deleted out that right there because I didn't want it. And then of course you can, you know, justify your text any way you want to, all that, bold, italics, etc. And then let's just go in here. And so you can come in and you can pick an image to go in there. So let me just see if I got an image I can pull up real quick. Uh, let's just put this image in there. Okay, so we got a little image right there. Um, alt text, you can, you can make your image width, image height, set all this stuff, the font size. In our case here, we're using a much smaller font, font colors, all that. There's some themes. I've never actually used any of those. But then we come in here to our advanced and it says image text as a layout. You can change this then to text image. So one will be on the left, one will be on the right. And then you have different widths you can choose. You can have them be 50-50, or you can have them 70, 30, 80, 20. Now the only problem here is, is they don't have what I needed, which was a 90-10. Because in order to get these two, the two elements close enough to each other, I needed a 90-10, which they did not have. So we can have round corners, all this kind of stuff. So what I had to do, so let's come in here and delete this. Because they did not have a 90-10, I had to use some CSS. And this is the one that definitely has the most of the CSS in it. And um, let's see here what I can do. 
Okay, so what we did is this element here, and let me, let me go over here and just take a look at it. So let me right click on here and we're gonna go to inspect. And what we have that we're looking at here is this element right here. And so it says L feature image 8020 because we chose the one that was 80 and 20 on the split. If it had been 50 50, the numbers would be 50 50. So we have here L featured image 8020. And then we're saying we want the L screenshot text to be 90% and the L screenshot image to be 10%. So we're doing basically exactly what they have in here, except uh, we're having to tell it we want different sizes. So here is our element screenshot text, and we can click on this, and you can see here it's 90%, but out of the box, it's right here. Let me turn off what I put in. Out of the box, it's set at 80% right there. So we didn't want that, we had to make it smaller, so that's why I just used a little bit of CSS. Same thing here, out of the box, it's 20% right down here, and I changed it with the CSS to 10%. That's what all of this gobbledygook here means, and then we put in a top margin of two pixels just because I thought it was sitting up a little bit too high and we pushed it down. And then what we wanted to do is, the one last thing here, we got our L screenshot image again, we said we want to text align that to the left. And let me see L screenshot image. And right here, right there it is again. We got text align to the left. And as I look at this here and I go 10% there, let me see. Actually, why don't I just do this? Put that in there. Let me see, can I take that out there then? Yep, okay. All right, well there, I just took out a line of code because as I was looking at it, I'm like going, well, I got the same, I got the same class name here, so I must be able to be able to put that in there, and of course I did, and there you go. And again, like I said, I originally did this, I don't know how long ago, and so every time I come in, after I learn more and more stuff, I can come back in here. I mean, you didn't see half of the code that was in here. I had so much garbage code in here, that I mean, I deleted out probably as much as I left in here at the end. And then let me see, the only other thing I had in here was the, uh, um, basically the border. When, when the button came in here, it came in with a border. And so what I did on that is, let me, uh, let me see here, submit button. Okay, what I did there is I told it, to basically turn off the border. And one of the things you can do to turn off the border is I'm saying border unset. So if I take that out, you can see it maybe real quickly here as I turn the back off and then back on. You have a very slight border around the outside, but on the one that we had, um, for the example, they did not have a border around it. And then I did put in a little bit of a border bottom here in order to, you just watch down here, you're gonna see it's just a little bit of a slight black border because you can see here it's four pixels wide, but the color is black, but the opacity is only 13%. And so let me click on that and save this before it decides, okay, it is saving for me, okay. I've had so many troubles when I was shooting the video and it died and then I came back in, I said, you know, just because it's 2020, the year that just will not go away, um, that's why things like that hurt uh, or happen. And I have a feeling we're all going to be pretty happy when we get to 2021. Hopefully it will be a much, much better year than this one has been for most everyone. Uh, but then a couple other real quick things here. So I, what I did here, and it's probably the best way to do this, is I set both of these two sections on this page to desktop only. And if you don't know how to do that, let me show you. I'll click on settings and you come down here and you just click on desktop only. If you wanted it on desktop and mobile, you would click on all. But then what I did is I basically duplicated these two for the, for the mobile. And so I have this one here, mobile only and mobile only. So I completely basically completely rebuilt the entire site for mobile, put in the big image. We took out the guy's uh, picture of himself. And then otherwise I looked at it and this all looks exactly the same as theirs does on mobile as well. So I think in the case of this one here, it's probably best just to create 
a separate desktop and a separate mobile page basically on their own. So um, that is it. I know it's a very long way around to um, show how to build what really amounts to a pretty simple site. But I just wanted to give you a little flair of what you can do with different CSS stuff just so you could really just have an idea that this stuff is available. And also I wanted to show you that 15 months ago, I built a horrible, ugly looking site that wasn't even close to the original. And so just, you know, keep working at it. And a year from now, you're going to be in the same league as I am as far as being able to just quickly pop out any kind of design that you want. So if you got any questions, just let me know.